Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave and wishing you a happy Sunday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. It's nice and cold. It's negative eight degrees Celsius. It's actually fucking freezing, more accurately speaking. But hey, as always, wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest, no matter what you're doing over in this cryptocurrency world, this crazy cryptocurrency world. So let's get on over here to the live scene as Bitcoin essentially still in the uh, in the same range um, that we spoke about yesterday and really the last uh, the last week and a half or so. But here's the big news and something something new to kind of talk on today. And also we will be talking talking about long-term analysis today as well as it is a Sunday. Anyways, um, just as far as inverted head and shoulders goes, which this, you know, was not one to begin with, uh, now it is pretty much all but confirmed. I mean, it is confirmed in my, I mean, it's already confirmed in my mind, but if, you know, even if you are, kind, even if you were squinting your eyes and looking at, you know, your inverse uh, Quasimodo over here, well, the right shoulder, you want to be somewhat symmetrical to your left shoulder. This is no longer symmetrical at all. Really wanted it to take off somewhere over here. Um, it did have kind of a chance yesterday, I suppose, as well. But uh, after, you know, you get to a certain point, it just kind of creates like a ledge, right? So anyways, what we still do, what we are still operating in, what is uh, certainly a lot more likely and does have a high degree to play out to an actual full-on move is this what could be ascending triangle right over here that we've been looking at again for the last, Jesus Christ, I have a lot of, uh, a lot of alerts right over here, for the last, what is it, you know, the last week and a half ever since we got two the very end of December it looks like let me just delete all these guys and we have been wedging ourselves into this uh, very very small range right over here governed essentially by the 200 exponential and the four hour total chart right over here at around 3900 and then this rising trend line which is now coming in right around about 3785 uh, ish area so whichever one does break first that is the direction that I'm going with um, some people are representing this as a an ascending triangle I'm just gonna get rid of my discord over there sorry about that uh, <laughs> just annoying sounds and uh, you know if you are representing it like a like a like a symmetrical triangle something like this which would imply a more you know equal opportunity it's like a social justice warrior pattern it like it loves all directions equally um but but when we are talking about an overall trend of down i actually do put more weight on that so i will say now that um you know, if you put a gun to my head and you said crown, pick a direction, I'd say this one probably does break downwards. But uh, but hey, you know, if you are looking at this as an ascending triangle by, uh, by the same token, well, that those are statistically more likely to break onwards and upwards. I want to make a, str a strong point, an even stronger point here, though, which I hope that I always to espouse in that essentially as a trader, I don't have my opinion does not have to be right in order to make money. There are multiple ways to trade this and, and, and make money, even if I'm wrong at first. So actually did take or actually did uncover my short somewhere right around here um, on the breakage of, uh, of this guy, which we could actually more appropriately raise up to there. There we go. Um, and uh, and I'll hold it. You know, uh, it does look like I don't have to Bart back up. I hate that I even use that word Bart, but uh, it does. It does look like that. And I guess it's just the most uh, the easiest way to kind of convey those thoughts. Anyways, all of our uh, all of our lower time frame oscillators are actually headed down right now. Um, I'll, we'll, let's go tune into the uh, into the Stokes right here which actually have been getting the consolidation relatively well. Uh, two hours still headed south. Three hour uh, had a cross down late last night and headed south. Four hour, fresh cross down. Let's go to the eight hour. Eight hour, uh, kind of a fresh cross down, rejecting across the upside. Uh, 10 hour, 10 hour, fresh cross down. 12 hour, fresh cross down. What about daily? I don't think daily we got crossed up, but it is actually losing momentum, funnily enough, right over there. And what about the two day? Yeah, two day is snaking around and very undecisive. Technically speaking, what uh, would would you consider this up or down? I guess this is technically up, but they are so damn close that that is not to be trusted right there. I'm curious what the three day says though. Yeah, three day is still headed north as well. So um, that is that, and those are the kind of the clues within there. And as always, you know, you can do all the technical analysis. You can look at all of the different little indicators that you can look at. But at the end of the day, I want to be extremely, extremely careful in, in stating this and, and, and very, very careful in conveying this. The only thing that I care about right here is price action. You can see all of these things. You can see, you can see your fucking this and that. You can see overbought, oversold, whatever the fuck that might mean. And uh, and it still doesn't matter to me what at whichever side gets broken first. That is what matters. Remember, all these indicators they are based off of price, volume, and time, which is all represented in the charts themselves. So. If I were looking, or sorry, if I if I am paying attention to my um, to my exponentials, my simples, we can see that we basically what it's telling us right here is something that we already know, and and essentially that we're just consolidating. I mean, again, think of you know think uh, think of these moving averages as kind of like you know your Mac your McDonald's indicators, except better and more powerful and 
I would never use a MACD probably, but uh, but you can see that they they are converging on each other rather than diverging. What does that tell you? It tells you that it's consolidation. So when we actually do see these things, um, you know, start to split apart and diverge, then that will also help confirm a trend, which is more which is the more important thing to say. Obviously, you know, we can tell by price action this thing is you know it's it's fucking consolidating. No no shit. <laughs> you don't need to be a technical analyst or do you know years and years and years of this to understand this, but. Um, but overall, you know, 10 hour did close below the, below the 21 exponential moving average right over here. But, uh, then again, you know, you go out to the daily and the daily actually did close just above the 21 as well, even though the daily does look, you know, it's kind of, kind of like a rejection dildo at the top of your, at the top of your range right over here. But then again, you know, you, I mean, then, well, you do have follow through on, on this, uh, on this next one right over here, taking off the low of it. But we did end up above, above this guy again. It's just basically a line right here. As you see both sides getting converged into this area. Um, also just going off of price action. If we did take out, take, did take out the low of this guy at 37, 21 and a half, or take out the high of this guy at, uh, 38, 79, you know, that could also be another way to kind of confirm direction. If you don't want to wait for the dildo to close, I think, I think that would probably be worth a little bit of a position. Um, as uh, both sides have plenty of edge to go off of. So again, going back to going back to that conversation that you don't have to be right in order to make money. Well, first things first, if you know, if this thing breaks out to the upside, let's represent the bull case first, then that has a measure move pointing you all the way over here to about almost 4,200. Um, interestingly enough. Now, again, I want to see it fully close outside of this area. But yes, there is actually a measure move pointing you all the way over there. You will have resistances along the way. Um, and measure moves don't always get hit, especially bullish, bullish moves in, a bear, in an overall bearish market. And yes, the market is still Certainly bearish when you're making lower highs on the daily still bearish <laughs> unfortunately um i even saw i even saw a great uh post on crypto twitter today where uh where a guy had posted the delusional bears market cycle cheat sheet psychology whatever the fuck and it's just like wait you do understand <laughs> like, it hasn't changed around yet man it hasn't changed around in over a year so again this is the delusional thinking of some of some of some of the great people on crypto Twitter as it, uh, you know, as, as you typically get. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to I'm happy to go bullish when I actually see an uptrend, but still need to see that um, anyways. That is uh, that uh, that is what I'd be looking towards to on the upside. Uh, this is an interesting measure move to begin with because it would kind of line up with this with this descending trend line right over here, and that kind of has been our governing factor for putting in lower highs. So you know, if it is like a quick look up to this area and then sell back down to this area, well, perhaps just create another lower high um, as it has done in the past. And three touches would would certainly make it a trend. However, there is something to be aware of as well. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna lay out the bullish uh, case right now, even though I'm not really leaning towards it. Uh, I will lay it out because that's, you know, that's what you should do. And again, opinion not needed. You know, if price action tells me this is what this is the way to go. This is the way to fucking go. Um, while we do not have an inverted head and shoulders, I do believe that we have an ascending broadening wedge, which typically does get broken out to the upside. The key component of that is you don't know when, though. Um, and uh, and obviously, if the measure move to the upside did get hit, that would put you at, at about 4,200, which would be somewhere right over here. What, or I think it was like right over here, something like this, something like this, um, right, right around your 55 exponential on the daily. Uh, so that would obviously, you know, take this out and confirm this to the upside. So technically speaking, then you could play a measure move off the uh, descending broadening wedge, which again, just because it's in there doesn't mean it's always going to play out one to one, especially counter the overall trend. Although this, this would change around some, this would, this would actually change around a lot of things. Um, but uh, that'd be actually pointing you all the way to 4,900. So if you are talking about, I still don't see 5,000, but if you are, but if you are talking about, you know, 42, uh, you know, sorry, 4,900 or just below 5,000. Yeah, there is a way forwards to there. Um, you would have to battle with this guy on the way up and then this guy right here on the way up, basically your green 55 and then your cyan 100 just loves, just love how those ones uh, meet up with each other. But you know, if, uh, uh, assuming that it gets past both those and yes, it could get all the way to 4,900. Um, before I'd imagine sellers uh, pile back in. So again, um, that would be the more bullish case. Uh, the bullish case is very difficult to play because we're still in an overall bearish market, lower highs after lower highs for the last over a year, you know, no question, no questions really there. And more importantly for me, these, and, and the second thing, just kind of round out what I need to see for this thing to actually make me a believer and uh, get in some, into some long-term longs is first things first, just as we said, higher highs on a daily. That'd be a good start. 
Good start creating an uptrend. How about that? Uh, second thing and very important is I want to see a weekly diddle both open and close above the 200 exponential moving average right over here. Um, above 41.50, and, uh, and and that would make me drastically change my tune. I would jump into some long-term longs, uh, not not some long-term longs, but I would take some preliminary longs, not full positions, but but some like that. Um, and then the third and final and most important would be breaking back above the uh, the former breakdown area of around 6,000 right over here. We spent about over uh, about a year consolidating at this area and before breaking down and heading into this more aggressive downtrend right over here. So if Bitcoin does get back above there in the more traditional sense, then that would be you know that. Uh, that uh, that would be no questions asked in my mind. Now, obviously, I think we'll have some clues beforehand on you know it probably happening sooner rather than later. But hey, just uh, you know, j uh, j uh, just one of those things that uh, would kind of be like the final nail in the coffin. Now, let's go over the bearish case, and I do believe that the bears have probably a stronger case right here. But again. You know, uh, I will still be going off a of price action, but uh, when we're talking about an overall trend being down, you know, when, when in doubt, just go with the overall trend. If you are looking at this as a symmetrical triangle, then you know it's 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 more often than not going to break uh, going to uh, break with the overall trend as well, um, and that would have a measure move down around. If we broke it from right here, down around to this area, down around here, uh, thirty-four fifty-ish area. Um, you can see that there are significant supports along the way, uh, namely this guy, 3680, uh, and just basically your prior low right over there, and then uh, 30, 3570, 3569 right over here, which is also your 618 Fibonacci retracement. This guy over here kind of lining up with your uh, 0.5. So again, you know, it's, it is it is lining up. There is good confluence with these areas, and you probably would even be able to play like a little bit of a scalp balance there, I'd imagine. Um, although again, uh, you, know, it's, you really want to be closing shorts, or it's not financial advice, but not financial advice. I'm not trying to be your dad or anything like that either. It's not my intention, but just sharing what I do. I'd be, I'd be wanting to close shorts there, not put fucking logs in there. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane. I don't know why people do it, but they do because I guess getting 1%, uh, like, or sorry, not even 1%, but like a half percent on a trade is great instead of just like getting on an overall trend and being able to sleep at night. But fair enough. Fair enough. Um, anyways, uh, overall, if this did happen, if this did spill on over, um, yeah, the measure move does point down around here, right around to 3450-ish area, but uh, I do believe that it probably would make its full retrace down around here to about 3250, 3300, 3350 in this range right around here um, because essentially what I believe Bitcoin is doing right now is similar to what GBTC is doing, which has been a great leading indicator for Bitcoin, and GBTC actually did put in a couple of re a pair of rejection dildos uh, before the end of the trading day on Friday. And remember, this is not trade. This is not trade on the uh, on the weekend, so we won't we won't really have a resolution on this until um, until tomorrow Monday. So when the uh, when traditional markets open up, but overall, looking at this guy, uh, does look like rejection at this area. Does look like this ascending trend line is being respected. Looks you know pretty eerily familiar, right? But that also means that you know Bitcoin would actually probably make another run at its uh, at its overall resistance trend line. So fair enough, you know, take it as you will. Um, let's see what about our oscillators. Four hours actually headed north uh, on Stokes. What about a uh, two hour? Two hour is headed north as well. Hey, we got a lot of things actually heading north right here. Three hour fresh cross down. What about like some like a nine hour <laughs> random one uh 10 hours still headed up so fair enough you know they're actually more more things than not headed up right here and uh the higher time frames actually do look like they want to break up although you know you look at this and i see two i, I choose i see two paths and i can make the argument for both ways you got your stokes pointed up fresh cross up like that um you got the you 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 close you opened and close above this uh yellow 20 minute expansion moving average right over here you haven't done that in literally well, you had this trap right over here, so that's maybe not the best sign, but but you haven't done that in quite some time, but that uh, that typically is a very positive thing in my eyes. Um, but on the other side, on the on the other side of the token, still respecting it looks it looks like a clear rejection of this trend line right here, still respecting it as resistance, and this is a reversal style dildo, although not necessarily on like the highest volume of all time. I'm curious what like the very low time frame, say like an hourly. Um, yeah, hourly, hourly just looks like consolidation right over here. Kind of the same thing as what Bitcoins do it on spot markets, uh, essentially put in some sort of a symmetrical triangle. Uh, do we break it up or down? You know, you could make the same thing right over here, right? Break it down. It sends you down to this area right over here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, something like that. And if you break it up, well, probably going probably gonna to send you to, to that area right over there. Let's see. Does it match up? Does it work? Oh, my God. Sometimes technical analysis is just like it even it sometimes it even works. Anyways. Uh, OK, so that's it. That uh, that would be the more bearish scenario. Again, going on over here to um, 
to our spot charts. Uh, let's go to, let's go to a, yeah, daily. I think a daily is going to be the best one. So, so this would have been the more bullish scenario. Um, and you know, it's certainly very possible, although I'm not leaning towards it. You know, you do have to, I mean, it, it is, it is in play. It is, it is in play. The volume character was for that pattern actually do match up for it, for it ascending broadening wedge. The problem with it ascending broadening wedge though, is that you can make a couple more, you know, stabs at the low of it before actually, uh, before actually, you know, putting it, you know, breaking it out to the upside and remember just because it's just, I've seen every fucking pattern break out every way that it's, you know, technically not supposed to, right? Anyways, um, as long as Bitcoin is is respecting this descending triangle, right? Or sorry, descending uh, trend line right over here, we are still creating lower highs and perhaps per, pretty much just creating another. Well, what does this look like? Descending triangle again. That is essentially what Bitcoin did for almost a year at this level. And Bitcoin does have a nice history of playing uh, triangles in general. It likes triangles. I like triangles as well. Triangles are cool. Triangles are good. And triangles um, do seem to have a pretty damn good uh, degree of playing out. So. Anyways, just just out of curiosity, what would be the measure move from six thousand to? Okay, yeah, all right, all right. So we 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 just about got there. Um, anyways, uh, looking at this guy right over here, you know, eerily similar. Um, but again, only time will tell. I'm making a I'm making a massive assumption right here that that this bottom trend line right here will hold. But that's kind of my my general suspicion. If I am offering up my my opinion on the market, it's that Bitcoin's going to spend a lot of time, you know, basically filling out this area over the next you know couple months, th three months, four months, whatever the fuck it might be. And we're going to discuss some of those ideas a little bit later in this video on actual like timing of this, although not you know, my fair way of doing things. Uh, but I, yeah, I think it's fun to do on a Sunday morning, especially when price action has been essentially the same. Um, more importantly to me, you will notice that the 200 exponential and the 200 simple are now well below the 6,000 uh, area right over here. The, the, the critical area for me to get back above in order to denote that, you know, Bitcoin is, is actually officially bullish in my opinion, um, from like a higher time frame perspective in a higher degree of perspective and something that would cause me to go, you know, long term long. But what does this mean? It just means that there's a lot of pressure on price action now as these are not only sloped downwards, but they are now below that critical resistance. So Bitcoin will have to battle through that area, which it has not been able to get to get above for, you know, literally more than half a year. Um, and uh, and well, that is just likely it just means that it's more likely to continue right um anyways uh if we go over here to the two day i'm curious did we close another two day last night um we did not we did not so yeah still working on the same two day two days not really telling you any anything uh anything much over here hey what's up uh tem tech good to have you in here man good to meet you um Two day is still just being governed by the uh, by the 21 exponential. Uh, remember, Bitcoin has not been able to get above this and open and close a, uh, a two day dildo above this guy ever since the the, the two day dildo death cross right over here, the green 55 cross and the downside of the purple 200 and just being governed by it, you know, ever since. So so looking at that, that is, you know, that is of interest to me. I will put on the 10 simple really quickly here. Um, I'm curious what this guy's saying. I haven't really taken a look at him just yet. And yeah, 10 simple is actually providing resistance right now it, as it stands. As it stands, we will get a new tick on this uh, later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time along with a new weekly dildo. So, you know, if, if it does end below this area, I mean, it looks like we already rejected it right over here. Um, not, I mean, again, just kind of another impetus suggesting that this thing goes back down to, you know, the 3450-ish area. Um, let's see what the three-day says. I think three-day is probably being cradled by it still. Yes, indeed it is. So three-day three day will be providing support around that uh, 3700 mark or 30, 3680, which is, you know, exactly where we have that next kind of support trend line. I would look for a little bit of a bounce there. We don't, we do get another three-day actually tonight as well. So we're closing a daily two-day, three-day and weekly later tonight. So pretty big day. Um, pretty big day uh indeed so keep those one in, keep those ones in mind um but uh things are switching around and i do and i and i think that i'd be more comfortable saying that i do believe that this breaks on to the downside now um but i would not rule out like another you know another barty e move uh, up into this area right over here before this lower support trend line breaks um when it comes down to it, I mean, you know, every time Bitcoin comes back down to this trend line, it, it, it does this kind of bullshit. Um, so look for a volume. Vol so sorry, I should actually like specifically denote exactly what I'm looking for. I want to see I, I want to see one or the other. 
one or the other. First things first, um, I want to see Bitcoin, if it's going to break up to the upside, I want to see it take out the high of this guy right over here of, uh, of 3,900. If, if it even just ticks above there, I think that would be good for me to take a position. By the same token, if Bitcoin ticks below this low right over here, uh, or sorry, we could actually use this low right over here at 3,720 on, on max, then I'd probably take a little bit of position as well. Um, the second way of doing this and the probably the better way of doing this is waiting for can we do this on a two hour yeah we can do this on a two hour yeah waiting for a two hour dildo to actually confirm a break below this area right over here and then more importantly look for volume to to spruce back up i want to see something similar to what you did over here just something greater than uh than this obvious you know uh, this obvious uh, consolidation signature that we're looking at right over here so keep that one in mind because you know, a lot of my nose really itches. Um, keep that one in mind. Bitcoin's actually selling down a little bit right now, but again, not, you know, no volume, no volume confirmation just yet. So it's, <laughs> believe me, I'm getting excited too. Um, but, uh, but, you know, again, I want to see massive volume being, or, or relatively good volume being poured into this as, a, a, as one of those two things happens. So that's what to look for. Otherwise, you might just caught get caught in the elaborate web of all the shit tons of people that think that this thing broke out, you know, over here. Guys, it's breaking out. Guys, it's breaking out. Guys, fuck. You know, that kind of shit. So, again, um, keep that in mind, and that will and, and that should be a good defense against that. Of course, nothing's perfect, but that's the best way to, that I've found in my, in my experience. Anyways, um, okay, so we talked about that. We talked about that. Um, do we have any sort of uh, indications on our on our, on our our other trending indicators? Uh, Two-hour RSI is getting in the bear zone right over here. Let's actually give this guy a little bit more uh, breathing room. Uh, DMI is giving you a fresh sell signal on the two-hour. What about the four-hour? Four-hour is a fresh sell signal as well. Um, what about the eight-hour? I'm going to guess that this is no trend. Twelve-hour is going probably be no trend yeah okay so so the higher time frames are no trend what about the jewel i'm curious what the jewel says uh jewel no trend i th and, and this is my best thing here this is the one that i put the most weight on as far as also does go and it is completely neutral right here in fact this would actually this in fact this one would actually if anything be saying that um yeah if, if, if anything it'd be actually saying that we're a little bit more um a little bit more likely. No, it's it's not saying that. This one's... Yeah, uh, you could make the case both ways. It's so fucking neutral, but I, I guess there's a slight bullish tint, tint on this. Uh, let's see, the four-hour. Um, yeah, four hours the same thing. It's just right here. What about the two hour? Two hours. Mm, I mean, it's not really giving you much. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to take trades in this range. Is what this is. What this uh, one's really telling you. What about the daily? Uh, higher time frames did actually did actually give you the nice bounce right over here. But uh, again, that you know has it already played out or not? That's a real question. Um, weekly over here. Let's go to a higher time frame. Yeah, weekly. Weekly actually would be giving you a would would be giving you likely a buy signal. Um, it doesn't really stay in this area for long. This is like the whole history of Bitcoin. This is actually perhaps the second. Yeah, this this is the second lowest uh, on par with the with the former low of your 2014 2015 mark cycle. So weekly actually would be saying uh, go long. Fair enough. That's actually very interesting. That's actually very very interesting. I'm glad that I did look at that. But. Uh, Fair enough. All right. Let's see. Let's see if the jewel is is uh, is is that powerful. Is gonna tell. It's gonna tell us. Anyways, for right here, right now, um, Bitcoin just still crawling its way along. You can see that we're we you know we're still respecting this area. So uh, hard to get too excited until you have like a real move. Anyways, let's get on to the higher time frames now. And or actually, sorry. Let's cover. Uh, let's cover CMEs. Um, CMEs closed on last Friday at about thirty eight hundred. Long wick to the upside right over here. That's not necessarily the best sign, but it also does imply that you know Bitcoin's probably going to hang around this area. Um, before, you know, be, uh, essentially before before it opens at, I believe it's 6 p.m. Eastern time um, later tonight. So keep that one in mind as uh, as this guy, you know, likely to act as a magnet for price action. If not, then we will have, you know, if Bitcoin is opening down around here, uh, then there's going to be a nice massive gap. So I think right now it would be opening somewhere right around this, like a little bit under 3,800 as there is a discount on this. Um, so in order to match that up with spot markets, yeah, I'd probably open up somewhere right around here if price action stays at this 3790-ish area. Um, but again, that's why I'd that's why say don't rule out a BART before the end of day. 
uh, action, you know, coming back up to here would not really set anything off, especially, you know, as long as you're act, uh, acting below 3840. In fact, that might even be another, uh, in fact, that might even be another sell until you actually get back above it. And then again, it's like, do you want to play in the middle of the pattern? That's one of my rules. I don't, I don't fucking do that. Um, but, uh, you know, th there's trades be taken, not necessarily on weekends, uh, for the most part, but, but you never know. You never know. Every once in a while, you do get a big move on a weekend. Um, longs and shorts of it all are quite interesting here. Longs are actually all the way at uh, almost 34,000 open longs. Most of these going up on December 28th. So the price of Bitcoin on December 28th and the average price of these longs was right over here. Um, anywhere between about 3,600 and just kind of, I guess it'd be like right smack dab in the middle, right around 3,770. So longs are, uh, those longs are like, for the most part, in profit. Um, and shorts, on the other hand, are dropping off a cliff. In fact, shorts are fucking nosediving right now, losing um, losing about, what is it, 6,000? Yeah, over 6,000 shorts, over 7,000 shorts, over 7,000 shorts in the last uh, few days uh, right over here and currently currently hanging around the 28,000 uh, open short mark versus thirty almost 34,000 open longs. So this is the first time that we've actually had more shorts, or sorry, more longs and shorts since Bitcoin really, you know, started breaking into the 6,000 region. So again, a very, very interesting things. You really don't want above 30,000 open longs when, when price action is below 4,000. It's too many people on the bus, too many people thinking the same thing. And historically speaking, when Bitcoin does get around this 33,000 open longs mark, it that is where, you know, you get some pretty big dumps, historically speaking, um, doesn't, but that also means, you know, it can, it could, it, you know, it can get all the way up to 40,000 before the actual dump occurs. Um, so just because it's above this area does not mean it, it dumps immediately, but Hey, just something to be aware of. Um, okay. So we, I think we've covered enough of Bitcoin right there. Um, let's talk about the higher time frames. Uh, all right, so higher time frames on Bitcoin. Why is this? Why do I not believe that this thing's bottomed out? Why do I believe that it's going lower? Well, I think very, very clearly and very, very concisely. Let's get on the 200 right here. Um, why do I believe that Bitcoin's not bottomed? Well, there's there there's there's about five different things that I look for for an for an overall market bottom. Uh, first things first, I want to see absolutely massive volume on the low. Uh, this this right here is not the actual low. That's just a massive red dildo ending on its lows, which is actually quite a bearish sign. And making lower lows below that, you know, it's not good either. Uh, anyways, but I want to see massive volume on this nonetheless. Something similar to what you did over here in your parabolic mark cycle, just like over here on your actual low on your capitulation low. Pretty damn similar to what you did over here in your parabolic cycle to the upside. What this looks like a lot to me is this guy right over here, this kind of like stutter step where everyone gets really, really arrogantly bullish again. They're telling you about how you're stupid, delusional bear on crypto Twitter. And believe me, man, I want to be the fucking most bullish out of anyone here because I will be buying Elsa's the biggest pair of titties when Bitcoin goes to 20,000. So you better fucking believe I am super bullish long term. But, <laughs> but got to call a spade a spade. Um, and I am giving my honest opinion on this. Uh, of course, uh, as I mean, there's no really, there's no real reason not to. It's not like I get paid to do these YouTube videos or anything like that. Or anything like that. I can do this. I mean, mainly out of, <laughs> it's a bad thing to say, but mainly out of boredom and just, it also does feel good to like actually, you know, do something and connect with people. Uh, you know, I've kind of like lived a life where, you know, you can be like a trader and not really have to communicate with the outside world, but it gets, it, you know, it gets, it gets old after a little while. Um, and I'm actually a lot more, I feel a lot more fulfilled just as, as, as an aside doing this and like connecting with people. So many fucking so many like super cool people I've met through this just insanely successful people inspiring people and just people that uh, like I consider like genuine really good friends now especially a lot of guys in the uh, in the hidden discord um, in the program uh, <laughs> absolutely love the group right there um, anyways this guy right over here, I don't know how I got into that tangent, tangent looks very, very similar to what, to what you did right over here. Um, let's look at and let's measure the, the, percentage, uh, the, the percentage gain that we're off the lows right now, about 20%, right? 20%. Now, if we go over here uh, to this guy in 2014, um, this, you know, if we use dildo body to dildo body, which is what I just did for 2018, uh, that gives you about 23%. Pretty, pretty damn similar. Again, it doesn't need to be, you know, the exact same, but it is interesting. Now, I'm curious. I want to, I want to actually match this up with the MBT signal. Um, the MBT signal, which is what I do use to kind of uh, decide on, on, on potential market cycle bottoms as well. And, uh, 
And as you can see, the, the MVT signal has has called every top and every bottom in, in Bitcoin's market cycle history. As you can see right now, we are right around this 100 mark where my curse currently is. It typically bottoms out every, each and every time um, where my curse currently is now or a little bit lower. Now, over here in 2014, this is your bottom. Um, this is your bottom on the, on the oscillator. And look at where that kind of stutter set that we look, that we just looked at is right over here. You're, you're oscillating right around where? Around the 100 mark. Where are we doing it right now? Right around the 100 mark and uh, that would be one of the defining factors uh, alongside volume I want to see volume like this guy right over here I also want to see a timing factor there is a timing component to this as well when you put in an actual low you really don't spend one two three four days there you spend about you know an hour there or two hours there within about five to ten percent of it um, we can go look at now a few examples of what capitulation can look like it does it, and this this did not end up actually being capitulation, but this is what this, this is what it, it, it this is a good example of what it looked like on Bitcoin. Um, back on over here, in we actually had a couple examples in 2018, uh, um, right over here, 20, 2018. Uh, <laughs> Nicholas Martin's here, Mom. Bitcoin's not going up. Fuck. Yeah, so you went up about 25% in the span of a day. I, I think by end of day, it was something like 50 or six or 50 or so percent. But really, in like that first two hour period, you were up about 11%, right? Compare that with, you know, Bitcoin down around here. It's like, no, you spent literally four days within. 2%, 2 or 3% of the lows. So that's a, dr so, so, so that is a drastic, you know, change. Um, if we go to the daily, I think you can see it a lot, a lot better uh, right over here. Yeah, from from bottom to top of this of this first daily dildo, yeah, about 35%. That's 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 more than Bitcoin's done in three weeks. So that is very significant to me. Um, you also had a good example right over here. Uh, and again, same sort of thing where Bitcoin essentially, uh, well, can we can we can we actually do it? Let me see if we can scroll back. But this was when Bitcoin went from twenty thousand to ten thousand in the span of just like a couple days. Really, I mean, this is insane shit. There was one day where Bitcoin went down five thousand dollars. How do people not fucking talk about this, man? It, this was insane, in fucking insane. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I was not short, but I just got out of the market. Uh, I just got out of the market at about 16,500 somewhere right over here. Or was it? No, sorry. It was right. Or no, I, no, I'd not. Um, but I, I did not have a position over here. I do remember this, but I got out of the market, the market fully at around 16,500, uh, after this rejection right over here. Anyways, um, you know, this is another good example of a capitulation could look like, you know, within just a few hours, you are up about 30%. And by end of day, you're up about, you know, for almost 40% from bottom to top. I didn't, I didn't quite get the full dildo on there. Um, if we do go to, all right, we're going to, we're going to do this the old fashioned way. Cause I forgot, I forgot the actual date on this, but, um, if we go to the actual capitulation of 2014 and on a four hour dildo chart, we can see how fast that one was. That one was as well, right over here. Is this one? It? Is this it? I think this is it. That's it. That's it, baby. And you can see over here that very, 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 very rapidly, you get up to about 40% within it within about a four hour period. And by end of day, you're up about 60%. Again, I'm not saying that Bitcoin needs to get to these exact numbers, but to give you an idea, these numbers are about double on average what Bitcoin do has done in three weeks. So again, a complete, that's a complete different feeling. So putting all, all of those things together, I do not believe that the, uh, that the low is in. Um, also we should look at the, uh, the, the, uh, come on, get on over here. Um, is this invite only? Yeah. Uh, the BA historical volatility rank and MA and credit to Bollipore for, uh, for making this because it's actually quite useful, um, for this purpose alone. I don't really use it for anything else. I mean, you certainly can use it for, for other things, but, um, Hey, that doesn't look right. I guess you, you have to use it only on the daily. Um, but using it right over here, you know, it, it's a, it's ancient knowledge that that volatility, high volatility, extreme extreme volatility is where you get your market tops and market bottoms. This is, you know, this is something that I would pay attention to in, in traditional markets. And you can see over here that Bitcoin really did do really did put in a shit ton of volatility. Um, right at this range uh, on the on the drive down to thirty two hundred getting all the way to point, you know, not 0.7, which is pretty fucking good. But 
let's see where this thing matches up with on like actual, you know, super high. Like what, what would a one do? Uh, now you're seeing right over here. So we put in the bottom in, uh, in February on this guy. Nice. You put in the top of the whole fucking mark cycle on this guy right over here. You put in the top right over here or sorry, you put in the, uh, you put in the bottom right over here. Uh, of that drive you put in the top right over there you know and th these were like 30 percent moves either which way pretty fucking big and of course going back to our 2014 uh low or 2015 if you want to get super spe super spe specific you can see that this thing is getting all the way up to you know to the one area same thing on this high right over here getting all the way to the one area so yeah i do put a lot of weight on that and that is very important to me um not only that but i do want to put on the i haven't looked at this in a long time but the accumulation distribution indicator or net delta indicator as some people call it um but basically i care most about slope on this guy and the slope on our higher time frames especially i'm gonna guess uh yeah on the weekly and more importantly the monthly let's go to blx index for this one but uh but but uh but weekly slope has just basically started to the downside again this one does matter uh preferably on the monthly though um let's go back to this guy yes yeah, so monthly right over here you can see that bitcoin ever since ever since the slope changed from right over here it's been it's been it's been a clear and obvious downtrend and all you had to do is just short whenever that happened and you didn't even have to think about getting uh, about letting it up until actually kind of in a way now because the slope is changing it's getting less but it's not flattened out it has not gotten positive which is what i'm looking for to get overall bullish as well so i am looking for I am looking for this. This would be like more of a secondary type thing, um, but you can see it flattened out. So, so there's a couple things to say about this. I think that the bear market is actually getting more mature. I think that it is, you know, getting closer to being done. Um, as this would suggest, you know, it has let up some pressure, but it's not quite there just yet as far as actual, you know, down, uh, down pressure. Okay. So getting off that. All right. So if this thing is going to break down, then where is it likely to go towards? Well, um, let's see, going on to this chart right over here, uh, this next blue box territory right around the uh, 2300 to 2600 area is where I've marked out. That's also the 886 Fibonacci retracement, which is where you did bottom out in 2014. It's also some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming in, coming in from this area right over here. And if we put on the volume profile, then you have a very nice thick AF volume node right over here, actually bigger than what you did at the 6,000 mark. So you'd imagine that's you know gonna be of great interest. Um, of course, I wanna be extremely, extremely, apparent about saying this i don't think that's happening anytime soon got to bust through the 200 simple on the uh on the weekly first and i don't think that that's i don't think that that's happening like you know, you know this week or next week or even probably this month um but uh but if this area does break then this is the next area that i look start looking for uh towards if that area breaks then then my next potential bottoming area would be this guy right over here 1850 which i don't really see too many people talking about which makes me think that it's actually quite possible because the super bears think that this thing's going down to 1100 or 1300 and it'd be great to front run that area um but if that area fails and yeah this one certainly does come in play you got the 942 fibonacci retracement coming in right around there you can see the volume profile has the biggest uh thickest af node right over there and just by and, and in a more traditional sense and like the ancient knowledge sense that would kind of line up with your prior high of your former market cycle which you know typically the highs of your former market cycle become the lows of your next market cycle anyways uh could we could we have a time in on that perhaps well perhaps we could um you know if, if you put a gun in my head and said crown figure out a way or die and i'd say that's stakes are high man like why why <laughs> anyways uh <laughs> I don't put too much weight on this to be very, very clear. But if you put a gun in my head and said, do something, this is what I'd do. I'd say you have this diagonal trend line right here. You have this diagonal trend line right here. Both of these are holding in that first consolidation before your bull trap of those market cycles. So, you know, you, you break out right over here. It's a false breakout to get sold into. Then you base one and then you base twice, putting your ultimate low. Do we do the same thing in 2018? Actually, yes, we do. Uh, consolidate uh, under this area right over here. Break out. It's a bull trap. It gets rejected by the 30 simple and also the daily 200. And we've come down and we've actually based once off of it. We've actually based once off of it right over here. Also aligning with that 200 simple moving average. So I do like that for good confluence. Now, if you do come all the way down around here and do make a date, a projection on this, well, where would that line up with? Actually May or, well, yeah, it, this is this is actually a massive range, but uh, but basically early February at the uh, so so at the earliest about you know Feb, uh, early February and at the latest uh, late February. Oh, okay, I guess it's not that big then. 
just just like four weeks or so. Um, you know, if, if, if you're looking at this date, if you're looking at this target down around here, that'd have a date around, you know, middle of April. If you're looking at the very, very low ones, I mean, that would have, you know, a, around July. So again, this, I just want to put in perspective how long this is, you know, how long this can take. Um, I do want to also go through the matrix right now as well. We'll go, we'll, we'll just do this one really quick, but each and every one of these dotted trend lines is like a, is in, and, and this is like, and this is to represent my more bullish view of Bitcoin long-term. Um, but each and every one of these, uh, dotted trend lines is a, is basically a support trend line of a parabolic market cycle. So you have this first market cycle in 2010 to 2011, it gets broken, uh, right over here in 2012, that becomes a high of your next, uh, of your next cycle in 2013 and 2014, right over here. Then you create another support trend line for that market cycle right over here, right over here. It gets broken in 2015. That becomes a high of your 2018, 2017, 2018 market cycle right over here. Then we create another support trend line for this, for, uh, for this past market cycle that we did right over here and here it gets broken actually right over here on around the same time that the 200 weekly exponential uh, moving average got broken as well and does that become the governing factor going forwards well again three uh three times make a trend makes a trend we really don't have we really only have two times so far for this overall thing going forwards but uh perhaps we could figure out a governing factor go into the future so again this would be making the assumption that bitcoin you know like doesn't doesn't break the support trend line that uh, that will make for this next uh, market cycle um, beforehand. But you know, if we went all the way up to 2022, the high of this could be 90,000. And again, I'm not saying that it gets 90,000. I'm saying that you know your governing factor, your potential high, just like your potential high right over here uh, was 20,000, could be you know well, what did we just say 90,000? So yeah, that's almost under thousand. So yeah, I do believe that Bitcoin gets some of those crazier numbers. I mean, that's going to be you know if, if Elsa gets new titties, the biggest titties at 20,000. I mean, what the fuck am I going to do for 100,000? You don't even want to know my second target. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, you, you go a little bit further out. You know, this is 2024 over here. This is uh, 600,000. So probably do, you know, break a support trend line before then. Or maybe John McAfee is going to be right. And we're going all the way to fucking million. And then Warren Buffet is going to be very, very mad because he was wrong AF. Anyways, um, okay. So, yeah, uh, just talking about that. You know, just, just some interesting... Um, now, an another interesting thing about this is you will notice a secondary trend line right over here. That was the governing factor between your high and your in your pair or sorry in your bull trap, uh, and we can do the same thing over here in 20, uh, 2018. You notice that Bitcoin actually did go uh, go bullish once again once you actually broke back above this area right over here. So could it be that Bitcoin does something similar? Well, when, uh, whenever it breaks this trend line right over here, which is declining over time, I would become bullish as well. Um, and you know, if you do make like a, like perhaps a date and and pr uh, projection on this, maybe that's July right over here where it crosses maybe that's over here and in, in october of 2019 again i don't you know and, and that'll just be like the initial etchings of it i mean as you can see over here you really weren't too far off your actual lows during this part but this but this was a part where it was like okay now it's actually time again time being that critical com component that this is actually appropriate to be doing because well you know it's going to be moving now in your direction it's not just fucking in a lull like this i mean understand that bitcoin's going to go through in a, per a period of accumulation most likely it's not going to it's very unlikely to be bottom out of this area when you're talking about market cycle lows yeah, you do have that initial massive up, you know, that, uh, that we that we spoke about before of like, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent, whatever it might be. But after that, you know, there is a long period of, of sideways, typically speaking, in a trading range. That's that's the time to kind of just be waiting and watching because, you know, again, you don't want to be in dead money or at least I don't want to be in dead money. For some people, it's going to be worth it because they don't want to watch charts all day. But for me, with no life, I am happy to do that. Anyways, um, okay. Also, I should mention uh, Bitfinex doing something very interesting tomorrow as well. Bitfinex uh, having uh, downtime, seven hours, so almost up to seven hours of downtime. That is insane. Uh, how is that acceptable? I have no fucking idea, but apparently it is. And um, and, and that's happening on uh, on tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. You know, we've seen fuckery go down uh, during those times. So be aware. Anyways, um, okay, so that, I think that covers it up for, for Mr. Bitcoin. Um, we've talked about enough there. Let's go cover up um, uh, traditional markets. Um, traditional markets are interesting, right, are interesting here to me as uh, the weekly had a pretty pretty good close. Uh, almost reached our next resistance right around 254 and a half. That would likely line up with our daily 21 or have we already hit that? Yeah, I probably do bounce off this on first pass, but uh, uh, you know, over the course of this month, um, 
I, I, I would, I would certainly not put it out of, uh, out of question that, 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 uh, spy gets all the way to about 260 a share. Yeah, somewhere right around here. Um, that could, you know, is certainly, certainly in the cards, certainly in the cards. And now would probably be the more traditional area of selling again, while I am overall bearish on this, just like I am overall bearish on Bitcoin thinking that it will go lower over time, perhaps down into this 210 to 220 range. Uh, same thing as Bitcoin, you know, you bounce off the 200 simple, you're not, you're very unlikely to just crash right back down below that, you know, almost immediately. We, we also hit the measure move on the, on the head and shoulders over here. So a lot of people are going to be closing on that. Um, and overall, you know, you are getting a lot of bad, you know, bad signals, but it's, it's going to take some time to play out. So the over leverage guys, the over aggressive guys, the emotional guys, they're going to be getting short down around here because everyone's talking about how bad the, the, the traditional markets look. Well, you're a little bit late to the party. Again, we, we talked about shorting this guy right over here when you actually got the signal to right around 278. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so great. Talked about that. Um, let's go look at gold. Actually, I do want to look at gold really quickly. Uh, gold, which should technically be uh, inverse or inversely correlated to traditional markets. And you do kind of see the same thing where gold's been, you know, putting in a nice, uh, nice rally over the last, uh, th these are weeklies. So over the last, what is it? I don't know, a few months. Um, up about 10 percent which is huge which is you know that's pretty damn big for traditional markets again it's not it's not cryptocurrency land um but is this rally coming to an end i think that it has found a local top for now um oh, my voice is leaving me uh on the lower time frames i think that this thing probably does come back down and at least test you know 1267 1269 um but overall yeah th this is a kind of a reach this is not kind of a rejection that is a rejection builder right there um but you know as long as it's above 1269 you give it the benefit of the doubt you could even get all the way back to 1250 and still be relatively okay but if it does the key point is that if it does break below 1250 big big problems big problems uh <laughs> so be aware of that um let's go look at ripples is ripple still doing the same thing as it has been and you know by the way it is interesting to look at ripples and uh, and look at stellar as well but ripples is doing what i what i talked about at the beginning when looking at the 21 and the 55 and i'm losing my voice i don't know why sorry my raspy lesbian is coming out extra today hey what the fuck voice let me just take a sip of this water Alrighty, there we go. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Uh, looking like a rejection to me, uh, heading below this and using the using this very obviously as resistance. So I don't like that the alts are not following, um, you know, the overall leaders, which actually seems to be Ethereum right now, uh, because it is event driven. But event driven, you know, you got event psychology, and well, you already know how that goes. Anyways, um, this guy actually is starting. Is are we gonna, are we gaining divergence between these two exponentials right here? Mm, not enough to really say so, but it, it this 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 does look like it's playing off and it does look like a rejection, especially on the daily. Uh, so to me, this actually looks like it wants to come down. Let's go look at Stellar as well. Uh, sorry, and when I say come down, I, I mean at least to like 33 and a half cents, perhaps even, you know, perhaps even uh, 32 and a half cents. And if things get bad, 30, 31 cents. Um, stellar over here, or yeah, Stellar. Um, actually, doesn't look as bad. Actually, doesn't look as bad. Uh, what about the lower time frames? What about the lower time frames? Um, lower time frames, not. Lower time frames is just a massive. A massive no this is monero whoops <laughs> wrong one <laughs> let's go to stellar over here there we go all right yeah so stellar on lower time frames you know looking very very similar to uh to to mr ripples uh basically putting in a symmetrical triangle right over here uh hanging on to the bottom side of it again this you know this would actually be a bull wick if it can close above um but uh but same sort of thing this one actually looks a little bit more neutral than anything um if you do break it out to the upside yeah somewhere right around here 12 and a half cents if you do break it out to the downside somewhere back to your prior lows so keep keep your eye on that you know i, I was actually mm, let's go to a four hour does it look droopy here i don't really have an opinion yeah it looks pretty new looks pretty neutral to me Okay, let's go. Let's go check on Buterol because he actually is the most important one to be looking at right now because he led this rally and he's been having the best results on this rally. But breaking the formation now, looking like we are going to get ready to play out the bearish divergence on this guy on the four. I mean, this this was pretty massive bearish divergence between this point and this point um, right over here. So th this likely is th this is likely to produce an actual result. Uh, DMI not giving any sort of signal just yet. What about a two hour? Yeah, two hour is giving a signal, um, and two hour is living below. Like we, we we broke the area that we spoke on yesterday uh, on the four hour dildo time frame, right around one fifty nine and a half. Uh, headed down to the next support. We are using the twenty one as resistance. It looks like if we close this next four hour dildo below there, then 
I'm gonna get rid of this guy because it's not that that important. But but then I'd be looking towards this area right over here, 150 ish area on Finex. Uh, four hour four hour Stokes just crossed down. 12 hour Stokes just crossed down. Daily Stokes are probably still headed up. I'd imagine. Yeah pr yeah still headed up. Uh, but if they fail to get any higher here, which by the way, it does look like a re this this looks like a full rejection of the 100 exponential right over here, um, and also some nice horizontal uh, trend lines. Yeah, there we go. And also the and also the 618 Fibonacci retracement. Uh, you're probably gonna get a cross on that guy as well, and kind of breaking this more aggressive trend line. Oh, that although that was pretty likely to happen. That's not a death sentence or anything like that. Uh, the daily would suggest that we're probably gonna go back down to about 144 and a half. Um, and uh, as your next support, and does that one hold or not? I mean, I, I, I'd imagine you do get a bounce around there. Um, and then we'll have to reassess. Okay, so let's go back on, a, on to Bitcoin, wrap this bitch up. Again, uh, being completely agnostic, and this is this is how I will be trading it. All I'm waiting for is a break of either 3750 or 3900. Whichever one happens first, that's the side that I'm getting on. And uh, until then, remaining neutral with you know my, my, my opinion, just because the former trend is down, I'll be bearish. Uh, so that's going to do it for this morning. Hope everyone's having a beautiful uh, Sunday. Hope's ever, hope's have, hope everyone's having the best Sunday possible. It's been a ple pleasure speaking with you. I'll be back on tomorrow with some more uh, with some more analysis, and I believe that we probably will have um, resolution on this pattern by then. Anyways, take care, and I'll speak with you guys soon.